Hi, I'm Mark, and today I have another very special top 10 for you. It's my personal top 10 books by Terry Pratchett. If you don't know the author yet, well, then I'll let me start with a brief introduction. In the 1980s, author Terry Pratchett, born in Beaconsfield in England in 1948, invented an incredibly flat world resting on the backs of four elephants in a giant turtoise and had an almost unbelievable success. 1% of all books sold in Great Britain are Discworld novels. Every eighth German owns a Pratchett book. Piper has released the first Discworld novel, The Colors of Magic, as well as the early volumes of Rincewind, Grim Reaper, The Witches and The Guards. Th those are masterpieces that fans unanimously regard as unrivaled. Terry Pratchett has received numerous awards, including the 2010 World Fantasy Lifetime Achievement Award. Most recently, the author lived in an estate in Broad Chalk in uh, Wiltshire, where he died on March 12th in 2015, unfortunately. And now we come straight to the books. On 10th, I have Feet of Clay. A thick autumn fog lies over Angmore Pock and strange murders are taking place in the city. A baker and a priest are killed for no apparent reasons. A poison attack is also carried out on the otherwise untouchable patrician, which he luckily survives. To Sir Samuel Vimes, commander of the Town Watch, these crimes make no sense. The tracks finally lead him to the golems, mindless creatures made of clay who only ever work and have never caused any trouble. But now they seem to have started to get themselves out of the way. And on number 9, it's Men at Arms. The Ankh-Morpok city guard will be increased to ensure fair representation of individual ethnic groups or something. The troop receives some unusual recruits, including a dwarf, a troll and a werewolf. Of course, trouble is inevitable. But it's not just internal problems that the guard is struggling with. A dangerous weapon is stolen from the Assassin's Guild and the influential forces want to prevent the guard from continuing its investigation. Luckily, Captain Vimes and his men aren't that easy to stop. And on 8th is Lords and Ladies. The small kingdom of Lanker is preparing for a very special Midsummer Eve festival. But the bungingly executed ritual of a group of young witches enables malicious elves to cross over to the human world, where they want to seize power for themselves. Alongside Grandma Weatherwax and Nanny Ock, Magrat, who's already quite bored with her role as a princess, is in great form. And the fairy tale Midsummer Night's Dream turns out to be a little more turbulent than originally planned. And on seven, it's Eric. Forget Faust. Here comes Eric. Eric is the youngest demonologist on the Discworld. Not only does he summon death and the devil, but also Rincewind, the most inept wizard in the galaxy. And in return, he has three customary wishes, eternal life, power, and the most beautiful woman in the history of the world. Eric, Rinswind, and the galaxy's snappiest chest embark on a turbulent adventure until everything goes wrong and Eric wants only one thing, back to mum. And on six, it's light fantastic. Rinswind becomes the savior of the world. A spruce trunk saves the clumsy Rinswind from falling off the edge of the disc world. The wizard finds himself in a forest populated by intelligent trees and meets the tourist two flower again. Meanwhile, the planet threatens to be engulfed by a red star. Only a magic spell can save the Discworld, but it's in Rinswind's hat. And on five, it's Strata. The first trip to the flattest of all worlds. Kinarat is a planet shaper and oversees the construction of new worlds. She has a lot of trouble with her employees who always allow themselves silly jokes. And then a mysterious stranger shows up who claims to have discovered a flat world where magicians and demons roam the streets. Kinarat travels to the mysterious planet and makes an incredible discovery. In this novel, Terry Pratchett, by the way, created his famous Discworld. And on four, it's good omens. Next Saturday is the end of the world. The Antichrist is born and the sinister demon Crowley is supposed to raise him so that he can bring about the apocalypse. But it turns out that the child was switched at birth. A race between heaven and hell begins. Angels, demons and witches try to track down the true Antichrist. And as the end of the world approaches, Crowley realizes that Earth isn't actually such a bad place in the universe after all. And on three, it's going postal. 
The crook, Feucht von Lipwig, is tasked with cleaning up the Discworld's shabby mail, for work has been dormant at the old post office in Ankh-Morpork for many years. Feucht is so successful that he incurs the wrath of the competition from the big line of the clacker. A public competition is to bring the decision. Mail coach against clacker. Who can bring a message faster to Genoa, 2,000 miles away? And on second place, it's more. The most lovable death ever. Before death leaves for his well-deserved vacation, he hires a young apprentice, Moore, as a substitute. Moore has his hands full. His scythe is demand all over the, the disc world, and it's considered good manners to personally visit kings, wizards, and other important figures before they die. But then Mord meets a young princess who is about to be assassinated. Mord rescues her, disrupting not only Death's plan, but the entire fabric of the Discworld. And in first place, of course, it's the color of magic. The first tourist on the Discworld is there. The magician Rincewind is plagued by bad luck. First, he's attacked by a self-important important spell. Then he loses his job at the Invisible University. From then on, he hired himself out as a tourist guide for the first tourist on the Discworld. And of course, pretty much everything goes wrong on the journey. Terry Pratchett is just brilliant, and I actually had a really hard time picking just 10 books. And in this case, by the way, I also say something that you very seldom hear from me. By the way, I also like the films and series based on Terry Pratchett's books. And if you're new to Terry Pratchett, I highly recommend that you start reading his books now. And if you want to get to know more cool books, you can find my next video here in the end screen. I'll see you there. Bis gleich.